Hi, it's Lauren Foster, your happiness and health coach, coming to you live on an early Sunday morning. I know it's early, but this is when I'm at my best and brightest and able to give you the very best delivery and the best information and to serve you the best. So if you're watching live, please say hello where you're where you're tuning in from and what's on your mind this morning. And if you are watching the playback, enter in your questions. I'm going to get to that in just a minute. So there's three things that I want to try to cover with you today. I hope it doesn't get too long. The first and most important is do not, no matter what, accept feeling less than amazing because of your age or your weight or any other number. Don't accept it. Decide right now that you get to feel amazing no matter what and that starting today, that's what you're going to do. The second thing that I want to talk about is why I am feeling so amazing right this minute, which is the primal blueprint, the primal lifestyle. I'm in training to become an ancestral health coach, a primal health coach. So I want to run over just the basics of what the primal lifestyle consists of. And then finally, I want to talk a little bit about this twist on the primal lifestyle by my favorite guy, Mark Sisson, who you know wrote this keto reset diet, which I feel is like the final missing piece that, of the puzzle that I needed to get to feeling so absolutely amazing all day long, every day. And my weight is gradually, slowly, and comfortably settling into where it's supposed to be. So first of all, the reason that I decided to do this video in the first place is I was on the phone with my dear, dear friend who I've known her for many, many years. And I was describing to her how I was feeling a, couple, a month or so ago before this great transformation and you know, telling her how I didn't have any energy and I ran out of steam at noon every day. And if, if I was going to teach a class that day, I didn't dare do anything else because I wouldn't have the energy and the mental clarity and the attention that I needed to bring to that. And so my, my days were crappy and short. I was having really awesome half days or quarter days, three or four hours a day. And this alone was unacceptable to me. Plus, I was having uncontrollable food cravings that I couldn't stop. And so I was getting mad at myself because I was eating things that I knew were just going to lead me in the wrong direction from my ideal weight goals. And, but I couldn't stop and I couldn't sleep. I was having hot flashes. I was having anxiety. I was having, you know, just crappy night's sleep. So basically everything was going crappy. And so I, I went back to my roots, to the primal lifestyle that I had been following since 2012, loosely, generally with, you know, the, and again, that it's very, very complicated. And I want to come back to the individual parts and pieces that are of the most interest to you. But first, just an overview of what the primal lifestyle looks like. And then we'll talk just a little bit about how dialing that in, dialing in your carbohydrates and your proteins and your fat to create the right balance for optimal gene expression, for optimal energy, for getting you in a place where you're working in harmony with your body instead of trying to use your willpower to force your amazing, awesome body into things that it's really not comfortable with. So the rules, if you will, not my, not, not my favorite word, but the, so say the guidelines of a primal lifestyle are very, very simple and very, very easy and very, very natural feeling to me. Now, that, that's another very important point is, oh, wait a minute, I digress. So I was telling my friend how crappy I was feeling and she says, oh yeah, I feel that way too. I only have half a day. I don't sleep well. I have hot flashes. I have, you know, in perfect agreement with all these things that I was saying. And then she said, she's going to know who she is when she watches this. That's just what happens when you get older. What? Do not make an agreement with that. There are so many amazing women pioneers that are teaching us this new lesson. Suzanne Summers, um, Sarah Gottfried, Christian Northrup, all of these brilliant, brilliant women, doctors, researchers are compiling all this data that says you get to feel amazing all the way up until the day you leave this planet. So please do not make an agreement that this is just what it looks like to be 50 or more. And by the way, this 
friend is less than 50. She's so much younger than me. I can't wait to share this video with her. And, and I just really wish that the people closest to me would listen to me better. So <laughs> that's the thing. All right. So the rules and guidelines and there are also there are people showing up and i want to say hello hi rob hi margie thank you so much for being here please please type in your questions type in your comments type in your experiences if there's something going on with you that you want to know about or ask about or share that you don't really want to share in this public form send me a private message connect with me and let me bring you with me on this great journey where that i'm just having such an awesome time okay so now now, the primal rules, if you will, are number one, eat plants and animals. This is what food was available to us over the two and a half million years that our bodies evolved in this way. Only for the last 10,000 years have we been eating industrialized things like, you know, wheat and grains and mass produced agricultural industrialized types of foods. There are, the, some studies say that 71% of what we eat today didn't even exist 10,000 years ago. And 10,000 years is not very long, folks. Our bodies did not evolve in the last 10,000 years. Maybe they will in the future, but for the sake of this discussion, let's just assume that we are still that hunter-gatherer animal that is designed and expecting to live off the land. So rule number one is eat plants, lots of plants and animals and good fats. Rule number two is avoid poisonous things. Now, these are the rules for survival for our primal ancestors when, you know, we were in danger of starvation. We were in danger of eating something that would kill us that we didn't know, you know, poisonous berries, poisonous mushrooms, whatever, um, or getting killed by a predator. So, and again, every single thing that I'm talking about has 20 or 30 other subjects that come along with it. So let me know what your interests are and I'll answer your questions directly. And I'm happy to hang out today and answer questions if it works out that way. But even if you're not watching live or if your question has already been asked, put it in there anyway, because if four or five, six people are asking the same question, we're totally going to get a, a, a segment on that. And, you know, if your question is unique, then maybe I'll just respond to you one on one. So number two, don't eat poisonous things. Back then it was a berry or a mushroom. Today. It's refined sugars, processed foods, fake foods. Big, big, big zero tolerance thing are the trans, man-made trans fats like corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil. All of these things have been processed to such an extent that they are, they are transformed, trans fats are transformed into a deadly substance that is just terrible for you, just as bad as radiation. Again, there's lots and lots of research on that and we could spend a whole segment on that just by itself. Number one, eat plants and animals. Number two, avoid poisonous things. Number three, move frequently and slowly and gently. Our primal ancestors didn't sit around all day. They were required to work, to carry firewood, to gather food, to walk long distances to find food, to haul their, their food back to the camp. That So we our bodies were not evolved to just sit around and be still all day. So gentle movement. And the, the good news for those of us who are not in love with exercise is that chronic exercise working out cardiovascularly at or above your maximum heart rate for too long is actually detrimental to optimal gene expression and reaching your ideal weight loss goals. Because when you, again, this is a whole subject all on its own, when you engage in what the primal community calls chronic cardio, you signal to your body that that there's danger and you trigger a fight or flight response, which causes your body to hang on to resources and to dump cortisol into your system and dump your glycogen stores and all kinds of funky things that go on. So two and a half hours or so a week of gentle cardio, you should be able to talk while you're jogging, running, walking, whatever it is that you choose to do to get yourself out and moving some extra time during the week. 
Um, next is lift heavy things every once in a while. Not every day, and you don't need to be in the gym pumping hundreds and thousands of pounds and really wearing yourself out, but once or twice a week, do some strength training. Emulate our ancestors who were lifting heavy rocks to rearrange furniture in, the, in, their, in their cave or in their camp. Um, and then sprint every once in a while, every, and not every day and not for long extended periods of time. Every seven to 10 days, just spend about 10 minutes running really fast, either on flat ground or running as fast as you can uphill or on a treadmill or even jogging in place, any way that you can just quickly put on a little burst of speed for just a few seconds, 10 to 15 seconds, and then rest for a few minutes and do this two or three, four times, however your current fitness level feels comfortable doing this. This is simulating the way that we used to live where we had to run fast every once in a while to outrun a predator or to catch our food, to catch our dinner, and then rest. When our primal ancestors weren't busy surviving, doing things to ensure that they found enough food, that they had enough shelter, all of those things, and the, which the rule that we're going to get to next is play, is they rested. They, they, they weren't just really moving around for movement's sake. So it didn't really make any sense. And our meals were sporadic. We ate seasonal fruit. So our bodies were designed to eat fruit during the summer. Again, this is, I'm getting outside of the overview. So rule number one, eat lots of plants and animals. Rule number two, don't eat poisonous things. Avoid poisonous things. Rule number three, move often and gently. Rule number four, lift heavy things every once in a while. Rule number five, sprint every once in a while. And then rule number six is to play. The, the, this part where we're getting into the lifestyle part is why in 2012, why this really resonated with me. I just loved everything, all of the rules that are, that are six through nine, 10, I, you know, is we'll see when we get to that. But rule number six is to play, get outside and, and move your body in ways that are fun. Get outside and get into your community and do things that are fun. Enjoy yourself. Read for pleasure. Don't have a life that is all about working all the time. Then we get into stress and we get into cortisol levels and we get into the chronic fight or flight response when we don't take the time to play. Rule number seven is to get adequate rest. In the winter time, this means eight hours or maybe nine or 10. Our bodies were designed to go to sleep when the sun goes down and to get up when the sun comes up. Now, of course, we, we, we as humans, the only animals that do that, by the way, have adapted our environment to match the things that we want instead of adapting ourselves to our environment. So now, instead of our body shutting down when the sun goes down, our body shut down when we decide to dim the lights. And so getting a great night's sleep, starting as the sun goes down to reduce your screen time, reduce the blue light that you're getting from computers and tablets and telephones and things like that. Um, dimming the lights, maybe lighting some candles and allowing your cortisol levels to drop and your melatonin levels to rise so that you get into a great, easy, comfortable, amazing and restful sleep. And then you wake naturally eight or nine or 10 hours later when your body's rested and when, when you feel like the sun is coming up. So get great sleep is rule number seven or eight. I'm not sure I'm running out. I'm, I'm losing track of what the rule numbers are. And then manage your stress. This is again, another completely subject all of its own. When you are under stress, your body is in a constant fight or there's Romeo. Hello, Romeo. <laughs> and it, he's joining us for our fire, fireside chat. So when you are under chronic stress, your body thinks that you are in danger and is doing all the things that it can do to, to try to protect you and help you to survive for the next few minutes. Now, 
your survival in the next few minutes does not require sex hormones. It does not require growth hormones or um, your immune system. Who cares if you're immune to germs and bacteria? Because if you don't survive the saber tooth tiger attack, then what point is there to that? So when you are under this perceived stress, this perceived life or death situation that in our modern busy pressure filled lives, we get into a lot, then your, your body can't go and do the things that it needs to do because it's busy trying to keep you alive. So again, another subject all on its own. And then finally, so that man, the, the, managing your stress can be meditation. It can be prayer. It can be taking the time to take a long hot bath or to lie in the sun, which that that's in there too, getting natural vitamin D from being outside and exposing yourself to the sun, exposing yourself to dirt, to the good bacteria that's out in the soil. You know, taking off your shoes and walking in the grass is so, so good for you in so many ways. Establishing the psychic, spiritual connection that you have with Mother Earth, exposing your body to the awesome bacteria that is everywhere that will help you to be healthier and healthier. And then the final rule of the Primal Blueprint is, you know, use your head. Don't do stupid things. These are rules for survival. In our, the primal times, it was, you know, a stupid thing might be to wander off on your own in territory that's covered with, you know, predators and that's not a safe place to be. These days, you know, texting and driving, driving under the influence. We, we live in a world where we engage in sort of dangerous activities kind of mindlessly, and that can be very, very dangerous. So, Finally, so we're, we're eating plants and animals. We are moving easily and frequently. We're running every once in a while. We're lifting weights every once in a while. We're sleeping great. We're meditating and managing our stress. Now, the, the, if you just do this and then you dial in your carb intake, you're going to be fine for the rest of your life. You could take this information and run with it and be absolutely perfectly, awesomely amazing for the rest of your life. So your body does not require carbohydrates to live. That is a complete misconception that has been perpetuated by the standard American diet and this industrialized society. The magic numbers, again, this is an overview for carbohydrate in, intake are anywhere around 150 carbs a day is going to keep you in the the weight where that you are now. If you dial that down a little bit to between 100 and 150 carbohydrates a day, your body is going to slowly and gently and very, very easily start to return to a an ideal weight. So if you have some fat that you want to remove from your body, try to get below 100 grams of carbs a day. So the 50 to 100 and the range is because we're all different sizes. I'm 4'11 and you know, 140 some odd pounds, 130, no, 130 some odd pounds now because I'm reducing. So my carbohydrate requirements are gonna be less than you know, a 200 pound man. So anywhere between 50 and 100 is gentle, easy, comfortable weight loss. Then when you get below 50 carbs a day, then you get into what is called ketosis. And this is a buzzword that is really big in, in all of the weight loss and health and fitness circles these days. And there's you know a lot of good information and there's a lot of misinformation. So this guy, Marxism, is my teacher in my Primal Health Coaching program at the Primal Health Coach Institute. And he just recently released this book. And, and Mark Sisson is the creator of the Primal Blueprint and all of the things that I've been talking with you about today originated from this guy and he really does his research. So if you have a question about anything specific that I've said, I can trace back through him back to his original research that he looked at. So that's comforting to me because there is a big level of trust that we kind of have to get to because we can't go and research everything ourselves. We don't have the resources, we, we don't want to. I don't wanna be a scientist that's in a laboratory doing tests with you know animals and people and figuring out all of the science, but I want someone to do the research and find trusted people for me to direct me to and direct me to good information. Hey, good girl.
There's my lacy. <laughs> All right. So um, I really, really encourage you, if you are not feeling good, if you are not able to get your weight to where you want it to be, to download this from Kindle, pick up a copy of it, just read it and see if it resonates with you. You know, connect with your highest self and see if this feels like something that might work for you and then make a commitment that you're going to give it a good solid try and see what happens for you. So, hi, Barry Young. Um, I'm new at this, so I'm figuring out how to find out if there are questions or if there is anything that I need to address today. So, so far, no questions. Um, uh, Debbie Webb, hi. Oh, I miss you. Robin, all the way from South Carolina, and Rob and Margie, and oh, my darling Carlina, I can't wait to see you. Nicole, I miss you. Oh, it's so lovely to see all of my friends here. Marie Shelton Rice is right here in Flag Pond with me, which I love. There's not many of us here in Flag Pond, so it's really fun for us to be here together. So please do send me your input and let me know of, among all of these topics, which is the most burning question that you have. Is it about carbohydrate intake? Is it about hormone expression and feeling better and managing the um, managing symptoms of menopause or other hormonal things? This is Leo. He's my lover boy. Um, is it... Well, whatever questions that you have, put them in the chat, even if you're watching this in the replay, because I'm going to come back and read every single one of them and respond to them and um, really try to help you and share this awesome information that I am learning as I go with you all the time. And so where I am today is I sleep, oh my goodness, like a champion. I fall asleep around nine or 10 whenever I feel like it. I sleep eight or nine or 10 hours. I wake up feeling just on fire and excited and engaged and energized about my day. And that energy lasts me all day long. I will sometimes take a nap in the afternoon if the spirit moves me. I love the decadence and the luxury of being able to take a nap anytime I want to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then seven or eight o'clock rolls around and I'm starting to feel tired. I'm starting to feel relaxed and I evolve gently into my evenings and do fun and relaxing things in my evenings and then I repeat the cycle and I'm accomplishing things and I'm really seeing myself move in the direction of my goals and my dreams and seeing real movement about that every day and so much of it starts here in your head and having the right attitude and getting yourself in the right place and starting off your days with those intentions again more the, a, a complete and total um, another video on that subject. So stay with me. Visit my website, BeHappyFirst.org. I am very good at teaching and writing and, and putting my arms around these principles. I am not so good yet about putting in systems of automation. So it might take me a minute to respond to you, but when you do get my response, it's going to be directly from me and not from an automated system. So thank you so much for being here with me. I just, just love having this opportunity to interact with you and engage with you. And I really look forward to sharing more information like this with you in the future. In the meantime, have an amazing day. Make the choice that you're going to be happy first, starting right now.